Rated T for teen. Brought to you by GUI. High Altitude Warfare Experimental Squadron Training Division presents... From space to the screen. I'm Travis Getz, Authenticity Coordinator for Tom Clancy's Hawks 2. When the original Hawks game debuted, there was a lot of buzz about the inclusion of GOI satellite imagery in the game, and many people had questions about how it's done. Well, here's an overview of the process for you. It all starts with one of GOI's two multi-million dollar space systems, GOI-1 or the older Icono satellite. Both are at an altitude of 423 miles above the Earth, making 15 orbits every day, traveling at about 4.6 miles per second. That's over 174,000 miles an hour. So just to help that sink in, in the time it takes you to see and hear this, the satellite has photographed 63 square miles, or 150 square kilometers of the Earth. The health and tasking of the satellites is monitored from the GOI control room in Dulles, Virginia. Here, GOI employees, many of whom are actual rocket scientists, do their work, sending commands and making sure the imagery of the Earth they collect gets down to the big receiving stations. Let's just take a moment to talk about what an incredible piece of hardware this is to have working for us. The total cost to bring the two-story tall, 4,600-pound GOI-1 into service was about $500 million. That includes the satellite and its camera, financing the launch itself, launch insurance, and some ground stations. This may sound like a lot of money, but it's really a bargain compared to what the big spy satellites cost. Those satellites may have more capabilities, but their pictures are always highly classified. GUI's images are not, so they can be shared with just about anyone. GUI 1 can collect imagery in black and white or in color. For video games, color is best, but black and white is sometimes preferred by customers in the defense and intelligence agencies. The satellite is able to see objects on the ground about the size of a home plate on a baseball field, but what's really important is that it's able to map an object that size to almost its exact location on the planet. In other words, each pixel collected by the satellite's digital camera has a precise latitude and longitude associated with it. And GUI 1 is more accurate in this respect than any other commercial satellite ever launched. So GOI satellites are really mapping machines in orbit and all of their imagery is map accurate. As it scans, this imagery is beamed to ground stations located in various parts of the world. These collection points pass the imagery to GOI's centralized command and control ground station, like the one in Northern Virginia. GOI works with three other stations in Alaska, Norway, and even in Antarctica. These are in the polar region since they are able to see the satellite every orbit. It's easy when a customer wants shots that are already in GOI's huge library of Earth imagery. The imagery just needs to be pulled and processed. When a customer wants new imagery, the new commands have to be sent to the satellite, and the satellite is directed to image that part of the Earth. Some customers want imagery products with very little manipulation. Others want imagery products that are processed into advanced products. In the case of the Hawks games, we usually ask for the imagery to receive orthorectification and color balancing so that the Hawks artists in Romania have the best base assets available. GUI 1 is basically a huge digital camera in space that is roughly the equivalent of a 1,800 megapixel lens. As you can imagine, the imagery has a huge memory footprint. It's delivered to the developers either via FTP or mailed on a series of hard drives. Once received by the game development team, it is inspected for cloud cover and possible artifacts to be corrected. Then a digital elevation map, or DEM, is created using polygons by referencing photos and elevation data, in some cases provided by the U.S. Geological Survey. The satellite imagery is draped over this DEM to create true 3D terrain. Once the imagery is in place, 3D models of certain details like buildings are added. Elements like trees are added as two-dimensional items called sprites, which have an image of a tree on them that always face the player's camera and thus give a three-dimensional appearance. At this point, any special effect or modifications are also being made, such as changing the time of day. GOI always tries to take imagery during the clearest conditions possible, but in the game, the developers sometimes want overcast, low sun, or even nighttime effects. So this has to be done by the game artists who manipulate the colors and contrast of the imagery. Finally, the in-game environments are checked for errors by the development testing team, and GUI receives videos to show them the final implementation of their imagery. All this to get the most realistic combat environments ready for you, the Hawks pilot. Thanks for your time, and we look forward to seeing you in the skies in Hawks 2.